Hey, I'm Todd. Thanks for watching my video and do all that good YouTube stuff. Share it, like it, hit the notification bell, thumbs up, subscribe, all the things that you do. Thanks for taking the time to watch my video and saving some money perhaps. I also invite you to check out the links in the description for some long-term savings with the stock market and uh, checking out the links for either E-Trade or M1 where you can uh, save and trade fractional stocks or Webull, which is uh, usually giving away a couple free stocks for just depositing $100. So I strongly invite you to invest in your future and check them out. Thanks, and let's get to the video. 2012 Kia Forte Coupe, front brake pad replacement, front brake rotor replacement, actually front brake caliper replacement, lower slide is not sliding. Here's the master cylinder right up here. Has a maximum and a minimum line. Keep an eye on that. Just twists off. Twists on. <clears throat> Just want to make sure the fluid is above the minimum and below the maximum when we're all done. So keep an eye on this. You maybe want to top it off because when you take the brake hoses off the calipers you'll lose, lose a little fluid so just keep an eye on it as you go so there's the master cylinder <clears throat> hey man <clears throat> you're alive it's good uh, five lug nuts uh, all bolts and nuts everything's left to loosen right to tighten so when the vehicle's on the ground break them loose a turn or two these are 21 millimeter lug nuts. Then you can jack up the vehicle. Got a nice pinch weld here. Some metal in here. Certainly jack up. I'll just go on the edge here. See what's underneath here. Oh, if you want to, right in the middle, you can jack up so you get both wheels off the ground. And then I would just, uh, if you're going to do that, go ahead and do that. Use safety stands, protect yourself, break the lug nuts loose on both sides, and then jack it up after they've broken loose a turn or two, and jack it up and take the wheel off. All right, so your tire rods off. Got your brake rotor. These rotors happen to be held on by two Phillips screws. Some are not. And if you lose them or for some reason need to drill them out, they're not coming out, you're probably going to be okay. Brake caliper, brake caliper mount, and two bolts holding the caliper on and two bolts holding the caliper mount on. Twelve millimeter here, probably ten millimeter for the bleeder. So to check your calipers, I like to get in here and try and get between the caliper here and the edge of the rotor. Not always so easy. And then try and collapse it. Ooh, this one is moving actually. At least the top I think is tilting in. <laughs> but not the bottom. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but the top is going in. But the bottom is not. So again, just like the other side, this is frozen in place. So we're going to replace the calipers. Using a 14 millimeter. If you're replacing the calipers, you don't really need to take the caliper off. Just take the 17 millimeter bolts for the bracket off and take the whole thing off. But I'm going to show you the caliper slide issue. And if you're doing just doing brakes, you can always just do this and flip this up out of the way and take your caliper, your brake pads out. Let's see, there's an angle of wear on that since the lower slide's not moving. Outer brake pad, nice and thick, too bad, also sl slanted. And here's the lower one, <gasps> does not move. I'm gonna use a gun and a 17 millimeter with a swivel, but you can certainly use a half inch breaker bar and a 17 millimeter.
which is a friction fit. So these may or may not come off the screws. I broke that one loose already. Let's see if this one will come off. Otherwise, I'm using my uh, impact driver here. We'll just be twisting counterclockwise on this while we tap on it with a hammer. So if there's no brake pedal pulsation, if there's no noise, and if this feels pretty smooth, you could throw pads on here without taking this off and be back on the road. However, you could experience noise still, even if there's no pulsation, so be aware of that. We're working on the driver's side. This is the upper, of course, slide. It does have a little rubber bushing on it. I honestly don't know if it makes a difference, but try and keep your bushings and non-bushing slides in the same spot so let's probably bungee cord that up out of the way so it's not hanging on the uh, brake hose take it if you need to take a hammer and tap on this Ugh. rotor off and that is removing your brake parts now to reassembly. We've got our uh, brake rotors. We're going to replace them in a bag. So it probably has a little bit of a film on there to keep it from rusting. So we're going to take this out and wash it. You can wash it with some uh, warm soap and water, then towel dry it, and you'll be good to go and slap it back on the vehicle. I do got a quality part, I like to take this apart, 14 millimeter, but both sizes can change, so don't depend on that. So I like to uh, then mount this and mount this separately. So I'm gonna slide this out. I'm gonna mount this and put the brake pads in when it's on the vehicle. I wanna check your threads on your calipers too. I did the other side already and they were stiff. So I took them out and I ran them in and out a few times with my gun and they ended up going pretty nice and smooth. But I want to check that in case uh, someone dinged up the threads before you on the caliper. And you're mounting it like this and then finding out there's an issue. We'll torque those to 72 foot-pounds. Twenty-one foot-pounds for this, and twenty-one foot-pounds basically for the uh, brake hose. When we do that, fits in a little hole in the caliper.
to the bar and a friend of mine, Woody, and this was like fucking three months ago. We're going to open up uh, the bleeder on both sides then and we'll wait for uh, air and fluid to just kind of bubble out. The other bleeder screw is actually 11 millimeter, so again, don't depend on bolt sizes because they can change, especially after 5, 10, 15 years of the vehicle and get parts swapped out. <clears throat> so we'll let that gravity bleed. Then I like to uh, pump the brakes a few times, get things set. Then I open it up again, get some more air out, and then I have an assistant. So we'll be doing that shortly after both sides gravity bleed. Then we'll top off the brake fluid here too. So we topped off the massive cylinder. I have an associate getting in there. He's going to pump the brakes a few times to pump up the pad calipers. Yeah, go ahead and pump. As we talked about, he's going to be pumping away. It's going to set the piston, collapse things beautifully. It's down. Pump it. I like to have him pump it three or four times. He doesn't always do that, but that's all right. And pump it. It's a nice solid stream of fluid, so we'll be done here. And we'll go to the other side with our 10 millimeter. All right, pump it. Pump it. Yeah. Pump it. Yeah. You can see we're getting nice streams of fluid, no air bubbling out. And pump it. If you want to give the person in the car a good workout, you can just keep doing this until their legs are burning. That's good, thanks. You can also clean everything up nice and dry and then have someone step on the brakes and uh, see if there's any fluid coming out where your banjo bolt fitting is. And again, we can just uh, verify our fluid level, top it off as needed, and uh, should be good to go. I would always still pump the brakes a couple times, make sure they're set before I give it to someone else to drive. Put your lug nuts on, and they're probably, uh, yeah, they're like at 80 foot-pounds. And tighten them in a crisscross pattern. Tighten them as tight as you can while it's up in the air, and then once the wheel's spinning, of course, put it down so the wheel's touching the ground, and then torque them down. And that is replacing your front brake pads. Front brake rotor front brake calipers on your Kia